with what the hell is going on part two if you missed part one what the hell <laughs> what the hell <laughs> part one you gotta awesome. watch. yeah you gotta go back and watch part one part one was great and if you don't know where to find it it was the previous episode from this one all right so very simple part one what the hell happened um i don't know how well you guys will see it what the hell happened august part two of 2020 um so as you guys know it, it's i'm gonna open it up like this and i don't wanna i'm not gonna throw people's faces under the bus or whatever hairs beards under the bus um <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna throw anything under the bus but i did so i i i did a a a thing on on youtube i did a plug and, um, you know, somebody, somebody else did a plug on me and it was, I thought it was funny. I was just like, cool. It's funny, dude. Like, you know, I, I, I cracked up or girl, I don't want to say who it was guy or girl. I thought it was funny. Um, I think next level you were cracking up. I think you were the one actually that told me about it. You're like, dude, you got to check this out. I'm like, what the hell is this? So I'm laughing. I'm cracking up. I was like, dude, this is, <laughs> this is awesome. Hey, maybe I should do something similar. Um, well that backfired, <laughs> <laughs> that backfired pretty hard it sounds uh, like a without next level idea <laughs> man. without getting too much into the details. You probably noticed in it, you, you probably, if, if you've seen my August videos, there's a plug that I had in there that I had to take out. Um, and again, I don't want to go too far into the rabbit hole. Um, I had, I actually had a lot of good feedback on that. Um, people were saying how hilarious that was. And they're like, dude, like, they're like, the best part is when you did this. The best part is when you did that. And the best part for me, the best part is the explosions at the end <laughs> and the little fire thing goes in circle. It's all super cheesy. And, um, well, a person didn't find it too funny. You know, that's fine. Whatever. Um, you know, not, you can't, you can't please anybody, um, everybody. Everybody, anybody, whatever. <laughs> um, but the argument wasn't really well. I'm I'm sure the argument on their behalf was valid. Where I was just like, well, you know, you did also this, this, this. I'm not crying about it. Whatever. Um, I don't know. I apparently I made millions of dollars. So <laughs> apparently I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Those real hot dollars. How else are you going to spend it on all the, all the tech? You need those Rojas dollars. I need them Rojas dollars. If you don't know, I'm going to make it rain, um, which kind of brings me up to my next topic, which is something else I can't really talk about either, but I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell? I'm not going to give, I'm not giving the company's name. I'm not giving exactly what they're doing or nothing, but um, what the hell you just wasted 30 minutes of my time in this meeting when I could have um, been uh, recording what the hell part two. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Double what the hell? <laughs> Double what the hell? So I had a, a, a huge company approach me. And I mean huge. So – um, that was kind of over exaggerated there. <laughs> Explosions. <laughs> <laughs> My brain almost hurt when I said that. Huge. <laughs> um, there's going to be a direct competitor to StreamYard coming soon. And and I know we use StreamYard for YouTube. Um, we do our we, you could do your recordings, you could do your um your live videos, you know, you, you collaborate with different people and do live on different channels. You can go to different platforms like Facebook and stuff like that. There is a very, so when people say StreamYard, nobody has a, like, do we know who owns StreamYard? You know what? I don't even know, but I've given them my money. <laughs> Me too. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested on who owns StreamYard now. 
but so there's a company much bigger. I'm not going to give the name of, of what the company is or what the name of this new thing is. Nothing like that. But this is what I'm going to say. It's going to be free. Um, it's going it, to right off the bat. It's going to have it's going to have the best quality that your your phone is going to be able to push. So oh, if you have if you have some solid Wi-Fi connection, you'll get the 1080, you'll get the 4K, you'll get whatever Ooh. best quality you have free right off the bat. Maximum of four people on your live show. I asked them why not go more, and they said they've seen how other people do it. And sometimes when you have too many people, there's just too too many people, and it sounds bad. And look, I got – I got notes from this meeting. Um, there is going to be a desktop experience coming soon. So this is going to be for cell phones. I'm going to get on my what the hell in a second. Um, it's going to be straight up on the phone. You can do this for travel. They're going to have custom. You could do custom borders. Exactly how we have our custom border here through StreamYard. They're going to have that accessible free right off the bat. You're going to be able to do so many things that you give our money to StreamYard free right off of this app. I know. It's like, wait, are you kidding me? I'm kind of like, ha. Ah. Um, you could invite people with one click of a play. It, it, it says invite. Your phone's going to open up, and it says, where do you want to go? StreamYard. You want to go to uh, Telegram, text messages, Facebook Messenger. Who do you want to send it to? Do you want to text it to them? You'll be able to send them a private link directly. Very easily, they click it. Once the show is over, the link expires. Um, That's good because, you know, like there's times where you click on a StreamYard link and you'll end up in an after show. Or <laughs> Yeah, it's the way they do it is very, it's very unique. Um, they're going to have this cool thing where if somebody donates, you know how we have these super stickers through StreamYard? Yeah. Um, when YouTube. somebody youtube's when they when somebody donates there it's going to be this thing where uh this animation where like confetti comes down oh that's cool um and then it animations shows, i need yeah, that it, it's going to be very neat now here's my what the hell it's going to be for ios only do I they even have enough ram to run all that i don't, I don't no. know <laughs> <laughs> sorry right? i had to say that when they told me this and I'm just like, so we went through 30 minutes of what the, what like, dude, this is awesome. This is awesome. And then they're just like, okay, here's the QR code. Make sure you get it. And then, so I was going to do it. And then I just went straight to the Google play store to download the beta. And cause it's, everything was very private, very hidden and everything. So I couldn't find it. And I said, I can't, I'm like, I can't find this on the play store. And they're like, well, you got to go to the app store. And I'm just like, I'm on an Android. And they're like, this is on an iOS. And I'm like, why don't you just start the initial email with this is for iOS users right. only. Your email was not. He's like, I'm pretty sure it says it in the email. Like, you know, you know, because practically at that point, we're both looking at each other like you just wasted my time. And I'm just like. My my what the hell was like, dude, why are you guys limiting yourself to I get it, you guys are trying to simplify something that's from StreamYard. But when you're trying to simplify it to the point, and I get it, iPhones are very simplified with a lot of stuff. Samsungs and your Google Pixels and all your Android phones, they're a little bit more complicated. And, and to do the full feature, there's a lot of people that don't know how to do the full features on an Android phone. I could tell you this, I don't use my full features on my Android phone. But if I ever wanted to explore something, I'll be able to figure it out. And yeah, when, when he said that, and I'm like, you know how many users you are losing because of that? Why would you do? I'm like, look, I had to get, I had to get, um, uh, stream labs to go live on YouTube a few months ago. It would have been very nice to have this new thing. And even, you know what, even, even if, 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 if you guys are just putting it out now, why are you guys not pushing it out on every single platform possible? Why are you guys limiting yourself to just iOS? And he was saying, well, we're going to, once we're done with beta testing, they're doing, they're reaching out to a lot of people. The people that he mentioned, I was like, whoa, you guys are talking to those people too. Why me? <laughs> like, yeah. 
you know, I have a hundred and some thousand subscribers. Why are you talking to me? Um, and they're just like, no, you're, you have a very solid channel. Your retention rate is very, very high. They said, even with the videos that you have less than a thousand views, your retention rate is anywhere from 70% to 90%. Wow. That is really high. Holy crap. Usually it's like 30, 40%. On a good day, <laughs> right? <laughs> on a very good day. Yeah, I I, 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 I think this is the first time you're actually listening to my numbers because I know I, I never share what my retention rate is or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I know we're we're more worried about views, like how many views can we get, you know? Um, but I have a very very high retention rate. My I have a lot of stuff. That I have my, my a lot of my conversions is very high. A lot of my stuff is very high. So it's kind of like they were like, no, your your the size of your channel. And versus your retention rate sticks out on top of so many other people. Um, there are some streaming YouTubers that are much bigger than me. Um, and some people that have lost their channel and starting over that are bigger than me. That they said that their retention rate is anywhere from 10 to 30%. That they go there and they are just skim skimming through the thing. They're like they don't really watch. They're just they're just trying to get the information of what they need. Pause it and get the hell out of there. They're like your stuff is very different. They're like you're they're actually watching and paying attention and and going through there. But I'm just like, dude, why would you still? I'm like, come on, iOS out of all things, limiting. You are so limiting. And and they said, you know, as soon as we push it out to desktop, you're going to be one of the first that we're going to reach out. Um, because of how well you have that retention rate they're like people they're like it's funny how um i've heard this multiple times too you've said this before people that i've argued in the past have said this before to me um in a positive way you know but they said people on youtube that when they watch you they actually listen to you they don't just watch you they're like you have a very good presence in youtube and what and the, this and 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 this guy, when he, when they pick up on all these different analytics from all these different places and they look at all this stuff was saying, when you're on certain platforms, we can tell when you have a certain retention rate and we can tell when you have a very positive presence. Yours is one of them. So this is why we were coming after you to see if you could beta test. We're coming it. after you. We're coming after you. <laughs> but, which, 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 which is now a good segue to something that we can talk about. What the hell is going on with freaking Fortnite and oh Apple? God. Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay, man, that's some serious stuff. So this isn't new. I mean, it might be new with Fortnite, but this isn't new with Apple. And if anybody knows or anybody's seen it in the news, Apple takes like a good thirty percent of the revenue, and this is how Apple makes a killing. So they try to limit you if you put your, your stuff in their, their Apple store. They want 30% not just of your app sale, of all sales through your app. You see what I'm saying? So like let's say you download a free app and, uh, and then you go and you buy in-app currency or you buy an unlocked feature or whatever. They want their cut. Even if they, they don't even care. They, they want their cut so bad that like – I mean, I'll, I'll mention it after this one, but they want their cut real bad. And well, Fortnite was like, you know, we want to give more back to the people, right? So they started giving people discounts if they get outside of the app store and they purchased their V-Bucks or whatever the hell they call it. I don't know. And Apple was like, you're breaching our terms and conditions and all this stuff. It's just crazy though. But man, I think there's just way too much pressure on developers through the app store, the Amazon app store. I think the way they should do it, it should be, it should be a tiered system. In my opinion, it shouldn't be 30% across the board. I mean, there's, there's business and then there's just straight greed in my opinion, right? Like if they, if they've done made, you know, a couple thousand dollars off your app, do they need to make a couple hundred thousand dollars off your app at that point? Like, it should be a tiered system. I don't think it should be 30% of everything, maybe a bigger percentage off of the actual app purchase and then a smaller percent off of in-app purchases. To me, that makes more sense, right? Yeah. I don't know, man. 
I mean, you look at like, let's say PayPal. PayPal takes a cut per transaction if you have a business account. I mean, we all complain about it, but it's it's a standard. It's a norm, but it's not 30 percent. What yeah. business <laughs> what business can run off a 30 percent cut off every transaction? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. The <laughs> they're making enough. Okay, you know when we're when we're talking about. I know we talked about this before. How, how big of their stock is right now? Like, oh my god, they're going up. But the thing is that you know, like like I like I've talked to several people. They're just like, dude, you need to get on Apple's ecosystem. They have so much money with stock with this and that. I'm like, look, if you look at cell phones and iPads and whatever I they have. I don't make no money off of those products. <laughs> They're not making money on like what they'll do is they'll throw this new phone. And actually I'll, you know, I was, I was, I was doing some investigation on this thing. Every time yeah. they throw out a new phone, they lose a percentage of customers because they found out that they have to get rid of everything that they got cords, cables, accessories, whatever it is to buy all the new stuff because it will not be compatible with the new phone. So they're losing people as every single time. And there's be, there's going to be lines of just the hardcore people, but they're making their money off of stuff like this 30% cut of, you know, they have all these apps are like, sure, you want to be on this thing. You got to pay for it. You got, then we have to review it to see if you're even going to pass. And then once you're on here, then if, if it's an in-house purchase, now we're going to charge off the top. This is what we're getting. It's crazy. So no wonder you have so much money. I mean, when you're sitting at the top, you're going to have a lot of haters. And and I hate to admit it, but they are the highest valued company in the world. You know, it took them 42 years from IPO until they hit their first $1 trillion of business worth. Right? Do you know how, how long it took them to get to $2 trillion? Wait, how many years was the first time? 42. 42 years? 42 years. From when they were an inception, an IPO. Until and that was and that was 2018, and then from 2018 to 2020, they hit two trillion. <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you anything, it's because of those in-app purchases stuff that they get. No, cut. it's all the people losing the right side of their AirPods. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and now and now nothing works. <laughs> Oh man! Oh my god, that was funny. I uh, sorry, I laughed at my own joke there, but that's crazy. Think about it. We're not talking about small numbers. One trillion dollars. Think about it. A company today can make a trillion dollars in net worth in two years. Are they supposed to be at five trillion by 2020, 2022? Maybe. Where's this? Where's all this money going? <laughs> like, where's it coming from? I don't know, man. I just really hope a lot of these mid-value phones and mid-value competitors are able to level the playing field a little bit more, like humble some people, make some good business decisions for the people, not for the business. I mean, you can still have a successful business without making a trillion dollars in two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I... shit. Tesla's not making a trillion dollars in two years, and this guy's going to space and trying to give everyone internet. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get it, man. It's it's you get to a point where you're where you make so much money and greed just just takes over that, and it's just like, dude, like like is it really killing you guys? Like, what is it that that you know? Like, I've met people that greed has taken over them. Mm -hmm. And they go far left. You know, there's there's YouTubers, there's streamers, there's content creators, gamers, uh, merch sellers, resellers, box sellers, underwear sellers, <laughs> whatever sellers. There's all these people that as soon as they see a little like, ooh, I could sell this for this much. Now multiply that times that. Yeah, it, it's just yeah. I don't know. For me, it it just it, it's sad. It's sad to see how a juggernaut of a company like this, you know, would would do that. And I don't know if you know this, but last last uh, when was it? 
It was on. I got to pull my calendar. I know this has happened to like EA Sports, I think, in the past too, and a couple other companies. Yep. With Apple. With Apple. Um, on August 22nd, this is this is this just happened recently. Um, Fortnite did a hashtag free Fortnite, <laughs> and they did this video when you turned on the game. They had uh, one of the characters, one of the, the the like original popular characters that they always see. It's a girl with the pink hair. Yeah. Has all this like has like a vest with all these like stickers on it. She's running away from these people that are all in black. Um, it almost looked like Nazis. And they were like chasing her and she's running and she has her unicorn thing and they have a pair that looks similar to an apple with the bite and the thing and the it was a pear though and they had it in they had it in green um the whole thing was like a faded green and all these fortniter characters were in the room watching this thing and this thing was talking like you couldn't like understand what they were saying but a couple words was coming out and but it sounded very dictatorish like you know, like like back in World War II, like how they used to talk like that and and say certain things and roll their R's and and certain words that was coming out that you know, like our cut, our money, the rich, the right, and it was like it, it, dude, it was very like whoa, like this is some, this is a serious video what they're doing. And then what happened was she comes in, barges through the door. There's all these cop guys coming inside right behind her she throws her unicorn axe at the at the uh screen because everybody's like it's almost like they're being brainwashed Mm -hmm. you know to to buy this buy that spend money this buy here buy there and you could hear the subliminal messages of our cut our 30 percent are this are that it hits the screen that's some shit (laughs) dude it hits the screen and it's spider webs. And then he like stops like the pair. He stops looking and then all the cops stop. And then she starts, she turns around and starts walking away. And as she's walking away, everybody there is just like, like looking around, like, like they woke up. Yeah. It's almost like they woke up and they're looking around and then hashtag free Fortnite comes up. And it was like, dude, I had like all these goosebumps. And then they had this thing where it says, um, Fortnite uh, in purchases will be like 20% off or 30% off, something like that. Like it'll be lesser. You'll get more, more money in current in game yeah. currency than the normal. But during the same know. time though, hold on. During the same time though, they had a tournament going on and it was uh, started at 3 PM Eastern ended at 7 PM. No, I'm sorry. Pacific three to seven, three, four hours, four hours. This is what they did. They had a tournament and based on everybody's regions, you would go and get these points, like depending on your eliminations, depending on how long you survived, how many games you played. If you won, they were basing it off on points, a point system. Um, they, what they did, th- this is what's going to blow your mind. I don't know how many Xboxes they had to give away. PlayStation fours, Nintendo switches, all the different types of Android cell phones. Just think <laughs> about it. just think about that. Tablets, alienware laptops. They were like, they hit just about every single company they can get a hold of and said, we want to give stuff away. And let's do everything but iOS stuff. And for the tournament, everybody got on there and played. Uh, Apple is still running Fortnite right now. If you have it, you could still play it. But I think as I think to, I think uh, wait, hold on. Sometime, sometime the last week of August, August twenty seventh, I think it is. It's done. The new season starts for Fortnite, and no more on iOS unless some kind of deal happens. But that's it. No more. Done. Makes me wonder though, right? You can't treat any company as a little guy. You don't know who their connections are. What was one of the last things that we talked about, um, about Fortnite? Do you remember? Mm -mm. 
who bought into them for two hundred and fifty million dollars? Oh, Sony. Sony. So if you f with Fortnite, are you really effing with Sony? Because so- so- Sony is a shareholder, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's where it gets interesting, right? Is Disney a shareholder? Because I've seen a lot of Disney characters on there. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there that you see. <coughs> Sorry. They they must have like a a connection with a lot of people because you've seen Sony characters. I think you've seen DC characters also. Uh, different types of movies. They have a lot of different types of connections with a, a lot of different people. It's it's crazy when you get so big that I guess you start to become a little ignorant about what's going on around you. And all you see is numbers and, 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 and there's no follow through. Um, we were looking at the article with WordPress, right? Mm-hmm. WordPress, the founder claims that Apple cut off updates to his completely free app because it wanted 30%. <laughs> so I'm no math genius, as you guys saw from the last episode, but I'm pretty sure of free. <laughs> 30% of zero is still zero. <laughs> no. Sorry, what the no. hell? 30% of zero is you owe me 30 bucks. <laughs> oh <my God>. A <laughs> download. <laughs> 30 V bucks. So I, I don't know. I know I read this article. It came out in like August 21st. And a few days later, there was another article that came out saying that Apple apologized. But it should never get to that point. Th- that's my point. Like, usually most companies will have an algorithm that will be like 30% of zero is zero. I guess some people can't do that math, but an algorithm just does whatever you tell it to do, right? <laughs> so, I mean, that should be an automatic process. There shouldn't be someone sitting there saying, this person's not giving us 30% of zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um when when does it become when you're just too tech savvy for yourself <laughs> Yo, can, can, can. like someone's got to get fired for this bullshit yo it's Rob, like can we come up with a t-shirt that says i'm too tech savvy for this bs yes yo, let's do a t-shirt. <laughs> dude i'm 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 there i'm i'm <laughs> I'm I'm gonna do a shirt that says I'm too tech savvy, too tech savvy for this BS, and then too at the bottom BS for shirt. this BS. Oh my <laughs> dude, are you kidding me? Like, this is like when 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 you see this, it, it's like one of those things where where I don't know. You see a homeless person, you know they have money, or you know they don't have money, and then you go over there and ask them like, hey, can I borrow a dollar? Why are why would you do something like you know what I mean? It, there's just some things that just do not make sense, and this is a prime example of what the hell is wrong with you, Apple. Apple's been on the news for quite some time now with a lot of stuff that they're doing. I think what they're trying to do with this whole thirty percent thing is they're trying to hit everybody. Dude, I gotta read you this part from the article. I have to read it. Read it. it. Says, WordPress. Founding developer Matt uh, Mullenweg is accusing Apple of cutting off the ability to update the app until or unless he adds in-app purchases so the most valuable company in the world can extract 30% cut of the money. That is amazing. (laughs) They're like, even though you have no products that you need to upsell through the application, we need you to create a product and then upsell it and then give us 30%. (laughs) And until you do that, no updates that you submit through the iOS app store will will go through. You know how many people are going to start pulling out of iOS soon? Hold on. What do you call this? This would be... Communism. This, Isn't that like communism? No, this is what you call a monopoly. This is dictatorship or something, right? This is... This is... <laughs> so, okay. In the States, in the United States, they have this law that no company can have a monopoly of any sorts possible. You cannot be a dictator and tell people what to do, what not to do. Prime example, back in the day, uh, WWF renamed themselves to the WWE. 
um, because there is another thing called worldwide funding. And that was for like the pandas or the animals or something. And they had the name first before WWF, the World Wrestling Federation. So they said, we're, we're going to call ourselves World Wrestling Entertainment. Um, they I don't know if you're familiar with this, but WCW was their direct competitor back in the day. World Championship Wrestling. And then they mm -hmm. had ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling. Mm -hmm. WWE bought them both out. Mm -hmm. That's what you call a monopoly. So for them not to be considered a monopoly, they had to keep running those companies. They had to pay them to run so that way they are not considered a monopoly and then they're forced to pay God knows how much in taxes and bills and penalties and everything. In the meantime, there is a new company that came around TNA and all elite wrestling and some other underground ones. So then WWE absorbed ECW and WCW made their own brands. They had raw SmackDown ECW. They had like all like now they have like NXT. They have like all these different brands. On, it was almost like, like Monday through Friday, you had an event going on. And then Saturday, you had some kind of pre-pay-per-view and then Sunday, a pay-per-view. And it was like seven days a week. They just had stuff going on. And then the, the WWE Network later came about because it was just so much content. Um, so they dodged a bullet by keeping people afloat. What this is doing when, when they're dictating people to say, hey, of course, they they they're allowed to say you are allowed to or not allowed to based on money. You have to pay us a fee or whatever, but by them doing stuff like this to say, you have to create something for us to get paid and upsell it. So we get paid good. To me, that sounds like a dictatorship that, that to me, that sounds like a, uh, that uh, like a monopoly. It's crazy. It's crazy. So to give yeah. people an idea, right? So some people might be like, well, it's just an app. Right. It's just a, it's just an app in the store, but WordPress is actually a company completely free, has no tier programs that allows people to create free websites. There's not even any options for them to purchase a domain through them. Nothing. You get three gigs of space and you create a website that's completely free. Right. And in turn, you have millions of people using their service that are now held hostage because Apple decided to Say we're not updating your application. So that in turn was affecting millions of people that were creating free. Well, not free, but they were creating content for free because an awesome company like WordPress allowed them to do it on their platform. Mm -hmm. Millions that, of people. That sucks. I don't know. Apple's got to what the hell get their shit together. Uh, what's been going on with TikTok? It's been like all over the place. <laughs> so tiktok's going down tiktok's not going down tiktok's being sold to microsoft or somebody or oh. i don't know there's all this stuff going on the latest is tiktok and i don't know how they're gonna do this tiktok is suing the trump administration because trump is banning tiktok from the united states i don't even know if that's even possible if you can i guess you could sue here of the land of the free <laughs> you could sue, you could sue anybody there. yeah anybody we don't like you. We're gonna sue you. Um, but is tick okay? For one, TikTok is a Ch is currently owned by a Chinese company, right? Mm -hmm. So they have they hold no merit to so to sue to sue an American the American president. There's no way they, they that's not gonna stand. Like where are they gonna go? Are they gonna go to a Chinese court and do this? Are they gonna go to the American <laughs> court and do this? They gotta or do it in Mexico. Are they gonna yeah? Are they gonna meet in the middle and say, "Hey, let's go to Hawaii"? No, Hawaii is American based. Let, let's go to uh, let's go to Fiji. Let's go to let's go to Tonga. Go to Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, let's go to Switz. <laughs> oh my goodness! It's, TikTok said the Trump administration ignored our extensive efforts to address its concerns, which we conducted fully and in good faith. So they said, "Okay, you have concerns. We address them, and you just said, ah, blah blah blah. I can't hear you." <laughs> i also saw i don't know where i saw this but it was earlier today i don't know if it was like you know facebook news you know what i mean mm -hmm. but i heard that zuckerberg had a private meeting with trump to get tiktok banned <laughs> <laughs> isn't zuckerberg trying to buy tiktok 
I don't know what he's trying to buy. I thought I thought I thought he was trying to because he he bought Instagram, so he owns Instagram. Mm-hmm. Don't doesn't he owe Snapchat? Yo, he they own everything. They own WhatsApp. I don't know if they own Snapchat too, but it's like thought, all this talk about TikTok and people forgot about Snapchat. There's, there's a whole bunch of so there's a new one. There, there's a new so <laughs> okay. I don't did we talk about Likey? No. Do you know what I'm talking about when I say likey? I don't like yet. No, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just being dumb. <laughs> so I got approached. I got approached by a company called Like. It's it's spelled like uh, L I K E and then an extra E, likey. Um, and I think they were going. I, I, it was either like, oh, you know, what? now I have to. I'm, now I got to fat check myself. It's like yeah, likey, L I K E E, and it's supposed to be exactly like TikTok. And I got an email saying like, "Hey, we this is I think it's an American based um, app, and it's going to be exactly like TikTok. Um, we know TikTok's being banned. Would you mind promoting us and doing a video about likey so people know about likey?" And I'm like, "I know likey." <laughs> I'm like I, I, I'm like I get it that I'm doing uh, tech related stuff, um, but I, ha- I, you know, I was honest with them. I was like, you know what? I don't know what they're doing with TikTok. There's so much back and forth going on right now. I don't want to promote something that might not be here or might not last or might not be sustainable within a year. Um, I don't know if you guys are going to be taking over TikTok. If you do, let me know. If you guys buy them out and if you guys take over, I'll be glad to do a video. But if you guys are going to go head to head competing with them while TikTok is still around, it doesn't make sense for me to say, hey, breaking news, here's a new yeah. TikTok alternative. There's no way. I'm like, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It's, it's, what do they call it? Fake news, Fox News. <laughs> Fox News. <laughs> Fox News is fake news. <laughs> oh, wait. Fox. Uh, CNN. I didn't say anything. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Who said that? What? <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I know. I know back in the day they there was a alternative to Facebook. Do you remember that? I want to say yes, but I can't remember what it was. There was a group that did a Facebook alternative that was in the streaming community. And, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I uh, forget what it was called now. Oh man, I signed up for that too. Everybody signed up for it. A lot of people signed up for it. Where did it go? Um, you know what? I know I did a video. I probably did a breaking news video too. Breaking news. They went, it went down. It went down because they didn't have enough people to really do it. I know the team was kind of disbanding already as it was. So it was, it wasn't like, it wasn't something that they were going to continue to do because it just didn't make sense. You know, um, especially because they were, you know, the team was breaking apart. I'm trying to find, I forget what it was called. It was, I, I, it was a year ago. It was it was it was this time last year, I think it was. I thought it was more than a year ago. Wasn't uh like Goodfellows wasn't a part of that, was it? They were. I thought so, yeah. Okay. I think I deleted the video because it just became obsolete. Can't, I remember Goodfellows was a part of that, and I think Bob was promoting it too. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it in my thing here. I must have deleted the video because it's it it didn't make sense to do it anymore. Um or to have it up anymore. But they were dude, it was <sighs> it wasn't terrible. It wasn't terrible. It just wasn't I, I don't know. It, it was I guess you can call it it was a rip off to Facebook, but it but it wasn't it wasn't anything new. I know Facebook was having issues and all that stuff. And they were trying to bring something that was like, Hey, check this out. This is something brand new, something that we're going to be able to do. And, um, Oh, uh, uh, the name just came in and just came and left. Uh, my, my wigget, my wigget. That's right. My that's wigget, right. I my remember wigget. that. <laughs> my wigget. That's my funny. wigget. That's what it was. Oh man. Yeah. It sucks. But Likey reminded me of that. I'm like, look, it looks good. Looks like TikTok. It's a little bit different, but I'm I'm thinking about my wigget. I'm like, it ain't. 
I'm like, hopefully this is the next one that comes about. Let me know and I'll do that 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 video. But uh, yeah. Now um I mean whole bunch of what the hells for for August. I mean, this whole year is a what the hell uh what the hell moment. Um I, I saw a very funny quote yesterday and it said, <clears throat> I bet nobody in 2015 was accurate when they were, were when they were trying to guess what where they would be in the next five years. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so uh, we've talked a lot to people in the community that you know some have some kind of military background and like different places. And I know that you've been in the military and stuff like this. The next article was kind of like a like a, a like an extended what the fuck for me or what the hell? Sorry, whoops, drones. So apparently there was an article in 2017 that talked about DGI and the army banning them. Um, I didn't even know about that. And, and it, it, it struck me because I was like, shoot, you just got a nice DGI drone there. You got the Phantom, the Phantom 3, I think you got. Four. Phantom 4, even better. Don't downgrade me. <laughs> so there was another article that came out and it looks like the army still says no DGIs. You can't have them. But they were suggesting five other drones that you could uh, you could use. Now – what is the <clears throat> like do people bring a lot of personal tech when they're when they're deployed or when they're away or when they're training like how does that work so when you go in well every branch is is very unique and different how mm. those rules and regulations are one of the things that so for me being in the army i know um you've heard a few conversations already uh with some of the interviews with some uh, some of our fellow servicemen um in 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 the Marine Corps, when you check in, you literally strip down everything. You you put everything in a box, and they pretty much give you everything down to your underwear, like underwear, socks, undershirt, uniform, everything. You don't get to keep your cell phone. You don't get to keep a toothbrush. You don't get to keep you don't keep nothing. You turn everything in. You put it in a box. Put it away. You go through boot camp, and you're good. Once you're done with boot camp, then you start getting a little bit more leeway. You go into advanced training. You have all the stuff that you got in boot camp. You take it with you. At that point, you can take a cell phone with you. Um, when you go to your uh, MOS, which is your military opera, uh, uh, occupation specialist job, your 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 specialty job, you know what they train you. Um, it, that's where you learn what you're going to do. So if you're doing like artillery, infantry, intelligence, whatever it is, that's where you go you're allowed to bring whatever you want at that point. You don't, you have a, a locker, you have a giant locker that you could put all your uniforms and your stuff and, and you're in barracks up until you become a, uh, I think it's a sergeant when you get your own little private room. Corporals sometimes get private rooms. Um, they get corporal share rooms with corporals. And then I think once you become like a sergeant, staff sergeant, then you get like a, your own room. You don't share a room with somebody else. It's your own little room. Um, so once you're there and you have your own room, and then of course, if you get married, then you could get military housing and stuff like that. Just like any civilian, you can buy stuff. You could have it shipped to you. Hmm. If you go into boot camp, you take everything away from you. It's not like here's your own house. You're in a barracks. If you're in, if you're like a private, private first class, and you're in, you're stationed out somewhere, you're in barracks. You have a foot locker. You have a big locker. You could buy stuff at that point. Once you're past all the training and your station and everything, you're allowed to buy stuff and bring stuff with you if you want. There is certain regulations of stuff that you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Um, a lot of people they don't like to bring their cell phones because of possibility it could get it could, it could break, um, just because of the nature of the beast of what we're doing. With uh, a lot of the times when we do bring a cell phone and we're training, we'll leave it back wherever our sleeping quarters are at. Right. <clears throat> But when it comes to drones, drones doesn't have like when I was in drones wasn't a thing. Right. Of course. You know, but I can see how people would be like, hey, I want to take a drone. Um, You know, if you if you pull up a map of Camp Pendleton, if you Google map it, you won't be able to see what's on there. And you, there's a lot of stuff you can't see on there. Um, But I could only imagine if people have a drone going to Camp Pendleton, Camp Lejeune um. You know, like like think about it like this. Area 51 is a very secretive place that people do know about. 
I do not see anybody bringing in a cell phone to take pictures of like, hey, we're here, you know? This is what the front desk looks like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, they don't do that. Um, so what they're trying to do with drones now is apparently the exact same thing where it's like, no, you're not allowed to take pictures. You're not allowed to record everything that we're doing, the layout, stuff like that, which makes sense. And especially because I think they said DGI is based. Uh, it's a China based company. Yep. So we're literally, I, I think what's happening right now is because the whole COVID and all this stuff that's happening a lot of people are pissed off at China, like extremely pissed. There's a lot of controversy saying the COVID didn't start in China. It started in New York. You know, it started in the United States and it, it's, I don't know. There's, there's so many conspiracies. And if anyone's wearing a tinfoil hat while we're while watching us or listening to us, just go uh, do a quick Google search on event 301. Um, you can have fun with that. I'm not going to talk about it, but if you love conspiracy theories, have fun. <laughs> I'll look that up later. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. So, yeah, I think exactly what you're saying. There's a stronger movement to have more local based companies um, because everyone's kind of not willing to take any chances of any data going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I guess that's why it's taking me two months to ship an Android box to the States to some of the winners on my shows. But, hey, it is what it is. <clears throat> It it's is. crazy. So they did approve, you know, after the ban of all drones, especially DJI, uh, the army just uh, announced five drones that they're allowing, I, I guess, people to use. And you, when we were talking about this earlier, you did mention that one of the companies is familiar to you because it is from uh, where you live. Right. Um, and I think that's Vantage Robot Robotics. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Vantage Robotics, I think you, you said is based out of California. There's also Teal Drones. Uh, I'll. I'll Altavians, Parrots, and Skydio. Skydio okay. reminds me of Bluedio, and Vintage Skydio. Robotics reminds me of Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> Skydio is based on California also, mm -hmm. uh, and then Parrot is based in France. I don't know where the other two are based off of, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting what they're doing. I know there's, there's going to be a lot of new rules and laws coming and a lot of new... I don't know. DJI has some great stuff. And what's interesting is DJI actually came from the idea came from an American. Uh, the, 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 how he wanted to do everything came from an American. Mm -hmm. and that team, when they were forming it, like I was looking at that, that the DJI history on how they were doing a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff screams America, like the United States, yeah, America, America. And, but, <laughs> but here is the problem though, is the problem is anytime you hear made in China, you think cheap. Um, back in the day, it used to be like everything's made in China. Everything's made cheap. They would outsource everything because it was dirt cheap to do it. Mm -hmm. Who knows if it was sweatshops, if there was kids working in these warehouses or what it was. But nowadays, China is not cheap anymore. When, when, when you look at it, you're like, wait, this is made in China? Seriously? Like this is... This is quality. What the hell is this? You know, what's the there's a statistic somewhere. I don't know the numbers, but I think they say that the the majority of the richest people in the world live in China. Yep, they right. live in China. Majority. So, uh, in Shin, I mean, if you want to be more, if you want to be more specific, in Shenzhen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Shenzhen, China is is where they have their their mecca of warehouses of technologies yeah. of swap meets of there's if you guys don't know who sexy cyber uh sexy yeah. cyber uh shit i forget his name woo um if you check her youtube channel out she walks around going to some of these stores and seeing all the technology on there it is mind blowing how they what like what they do and how they do it and everybody is is just on a different level when it comes to technology out there. It's it's, yeah. it, it's crazy, you know. It's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. All the stuff that's being innovated. Um, I kind of I kind of would say, if you are investing in money into a drone or something big or an application or something like that, it looks like we're moving in the direction for you to kind of do your own research to find something that's local. 
because there's a lot of politics that are being involved with um, companies that are outside the country that you live in. And there's a lot of politics and under the table movements uh, for people to invest locally in local companies. And there's more local companies that are emerging and more push to invest into them and, and make them the standard. So I guess if you're going to put a lot of money into something and you want to use it on a daily basis, you might have to keep that in mind going forward for the next couple of years. It's the sad truth. I mean, there's a lot of products that are produced all around the world, but it is what it is. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It's uh, a, real quick before I forget it. It's, it's Naomi sexy cyborg. Woo is what her channel is. She's got some good stuff. Check it out. I mean, speaking of sexy cyborgs, <laughs> <laughs> what do we got now apparently there's some computer bots that have been been winning t-mobile tuesday giveaway contests for a while and i mean like legit a while so i'm not from the states so you maybe have to add some context to this for me but from just my brief reading of the article it was talking about how the, the tuesday t-mobile giveaways was giving away like hundreds of dollars in gift cards sometimes text sometimes phones Sometimes all kinds of, of crap. And I guess somebody wrote several bots to enter into these contests. And the way they were caught is that all the bots were, their address was located in a little tiny town called uh, Chadsford, Pennsylvania. And <laughs> <laughs> the Chadsford, Pennsylvania has a population of something like, I don't know, what was it? 3, it's huh? 3,700 total residents. Yeah. 3,700 total residents. And like the, the biggest percentage of the winners were in this little tiny town of 3,700 people. <laughs> and that's how they were caught. I mean, if you're smart enough to write a bot to rig a contest like this, at least like change the addresses around a little bit more. Don't just keep it in the same little town. <laughs> what the hell? Have you heard of a VPN? Right? Change your address. Change your location. Oh, it's ridiculous. Man. So I want to know how many. Hold on, let's see. Which put nearly a hundred, a hundred dollar gift cards up for grabs. A full fifteen winners appeared to hail from the Pennsylvania town. <laughs> so, so here, put this into perspective. Um, Chicago has two point seven million residents, and in this contest, only twenty two winners were for, from Chicago. This little <laughs> Chadsford town has 3,700 people in it, and 15 winners came from there. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Somebody said, I need to open a P.O. box in Chadsford. <laughs> there we yeah. go. <laughs> there we go. That's to do. I thought that was pretty funny when I was reading it. I was like, really? Like, there's so much, you know, capture this and bot protection that. But we hardly ever hear about when the bots actually win. Right? Yeah. You ever heard of, of a story where the bots actually won? <laughs> That's crazy. I need to make a bot now. Right? We need to make a bot. Um, some stuff. <laughs> I know we're, we're going to keep this this a little bit shorter because we're already getting into an hour on the, the second. What the hell? I mean, yeah. what the hell? Really pretty, like, what the hell? Like, we said we need to make more content, but what the hell? More content. Yeah. Uh, the last story of the day is kind of close to home. Um, just because it's a Canadian company, <laughs> but BlackBerry, what the hell? So BlackBerry was a huge thing and BlackBerry is actually from the same province. They're from Ontario, uh, where I live in, in, in Canada. And they were huge back in the day with, you know, the, the smartphones when f smartphones first came out and they were big on security and they were, they were really well known for having a physical keyboard. Mm -hmm. Right. And then. They kind of fell off and they just focused on uh, security software for companies. So they, they pulled away from, um, from mobiles, mobile phones, mobile devices, all that kind of stuff. But BlackBerry has announced that they were coming back and they're coming back in 5G in 2021. <laughs> and they're coming with a physical keyboard. And that's what got me. Okay. If BlackBerry was to come back and they were all touchscreen, I'd be like, dope. But they're coming back with a physical keyboard. And I had this conversation with my girlfriend last night. Actually, I, I, I talked to her about this. And, I, and she's like, some people like physical keyboards. And I said, no, 
they're not allowed to like physical keyboards. I said a physical keyboard is taking up real estate on your phone that you could be using for media consumption, for browsing the internet. Smartphone these days are used for so much more. When we use our standard smartphones, like our Samsungs and everything that are touchscreen, the keyboard disappears and we have the full real estate of our screen to use for whatever we want. Mm -hmm. A physical keyboard means I have to sacrifice that and I'm not willing to do that. Maybe I'm a small percentage of people. I think I'm larger. I'm a larger percentage, but I don't know. I don't know how well that's going to roll over. I don't know if this is just like a, a hoax that BlackBerry does every few years, just tell people that they're still around. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's one thing that I watched a, a while ago where it, it shows the boom of cell phones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The charts that go across? Yeah, that go across. Yeah. And BlackBerry was like destroying people at one point. And it was, it wasn't even like, oh, we're here. Let's, let's be in the lead. It was like, nah, it's like, dude, you're by yourself, way by yourself. <laughs> and then they, and then everybody else started to catch up, you know, like, like, you know, as, as, as they were not being innovative with stuff anymore, people were dumping their Blackberries and people were buying other things. This, I don't know it, them to release a 5G BlackBerry device with Android with a physical QWERTY keyboard. Well, there's there's one smart thing they're saying is that they're saying it's not going to be a flagship phone. They're not going to compete in the flagship market space. They say it's going to be a mid tier, and I guess that makes sense because to me, if it's going to have a physical keyboard, it's not flagship because people who are spending the premium dollars want to use their devices for a media device, like full smartphone. You know what this is really good for, though? What type of flagship this is going to be good for? Businesses. Yes. Because, well, because like, 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 put it this way. With my last job, I was, uh, I was operation, operations manager, and I was getting, they were, I was right about to be the operations director, and then I was going to become the CEO of the company. And one of the things, because I was their tech guy also, I was doing all the reports and everything. One of the things that we we're talking about was when they handed out phones, like I had a phone, the CEO had a phone, CFO, um, you know, some of us had cell phones and I'm just like, you know, I have a smartphone already that I could play video games on, but what, what is stopping me to play video games or download whatever I want when I think it was like the S7, the Galaxy S7 that I had, and mm -hmm. then and then the explosion, <laughs> yeah, explosion. <laughs> and then the CFO and the the CEO had uh, iPhones because that's that's what they wanted iPhones. Mm -hmm. You pick your phone, you pick what you want, and that's what they got you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I was like, hold on a second, we're spending we're spending how much money on something that we shouldn't? If this is a company cell phone, then why don't we get something that limits what we can download limits what we can have something like this like a blackberry where it has the keyboard on it i don't know if i'm a fan of the cat the, the keyboard because i'm with you that i want the whole real estate of my phone but at the same time if you're if you are talking about if this is for business all i all i need is text i need uh, uh maps like google maps and a way to talk to people. That's it. Call, phone calls. That's it. If, 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 if I could do those things and maybe some basic research on, on Google, like if I just want to Google, like, Hey, we, you need to take a business trip to Sacramento, which I did have to take several trips. Mm -hmm. um, I would, I would be off site somewhere else. You know, I would be downtown at, 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 at the, you know, the mayor's office or wherever, who's ever office, the district somewhere. And when they're telling me like, Hey, we need to send you over to Sacramento to the Capitol because they're going to have this grant coming in. And then there's this thing about the fires and this and that we need a, rep a representation there. It would be great just to be like, cool. I have the thing, pop it up, go to Google, find it. And then, okay, Hey, here's the link because like, obviously I won't be able to book stuff. I have to send stuff over to the CFO for them to book it for me. So, Hey, here, here's this, 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 that's it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't need anything else if I'm running a business and you know what? Um, here's some, here's the, what the hell Rojas, what the hell is going on? I'm in the market of 
looking for an office space. I am in the market of looking for a space to move all this stuff in here because I am outgrowing it extremely fast. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to get a warehouse, but I am looking for a, a two, like a front desk area where I could do all my editing and everything. And then a back office space where I could set up the screen and the, and the desk and I could do recording and do all kinds of stuff. So I'm actually look, I'm in the market of, of, of doing that stuff. Now, with that being said, the first thing I was thinking about is because I have my business going and everything is I want to have an opportunity to teach people and I want to get interns in there so I could say, Hey, you want to learn how to use Adobe Premiere Pro? You're going to school for this stuff. Cool. You can get your hours here. Come here. I'll teach you some stuff. You could edit some stuff. It'll take care of some of my editing, some of my YouTube stuff. That's relief. really smart. Yeah. It's, it's to relief myself a little bit. You, know? you need to relieve yourself. Okay. Well, if I go hey. to bat, <laughs> yes, right. I'm just saying. <laughs> but so I'm trying to do that where I'm going to be helping people. And as I'm growing, if I get to a certain point where I'm just like, dude, I could actually hire people. I wouldn't mind getting something like this to say, hey, I don't want to worry about you going to freaking Pornhub or, <laughs> or going or downloading. It <laughs> doesn't matter if there's a will, there's a way. Do it on your own phone, on your own time, and don't <laughs> use the freaking company's bathroom. <laughs> but I mean, if you think about it, back when smartphones first came out, and we had the PDAs and we had the Blackberries. PDAs disappeared. Blackberries stuck around for a little while. But who who did Blackberry lose to in the business marketplace? They lost to iPhones. And that's because... When iPhone came out, they were the only ones with an app store. They had the iTunes already going, which was the only one with, with that had that type of platforms. I, when iPhone came out, they were the only ones that was doing a lot of stuff by themselves. But it was also because the securities, the phones were locked down so much. Mm -hmm. That they were more trusted. So now BlackBerry is going to try to re-enter the space again against a company that's worth two trillion dollars. That's like a freaking Austin Power line. Two trillion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Um, how many people do you see carry a uh, pager nowadays? Nobody. Here's the thing. Now I'm going to flip this on you. I challenge you, and I challenge anybody listening out there or watching us. Next time you go to your doctor's office, next time you go to a hospital, see if they're carrying a pager. And if you don't see one, ask them, like, hey, do you carry a pager? They carry pagers with keyboards. That's, that's, that's how they communicate with each other. They don't carry a cell phone. They, they, if, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, that pager is on your body at all times. And that's how they hit you up. They hit come they pagers are huge in hospitals. This, if they lock this in, if they say, hey, we're gonna put Android, but we're locking it, we're not putting, we're not giving everything accessible, we're gonna do this whole thing for businesses, they could be onto something because like you said, iOS came out and they their stuff was locked. Now you could do all kinds of stuff with iOS that's mm -hmm. locked to iOS. Um, Android, you have more flexibility, ability to do literally whatever. But if these guys came in, it's almost like, 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 like the Chinese boxes when they were like, Hey, we got Android on there. It's not Android TV, but we got Android on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They could do something similar like that and lock, lock certain things. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's, just, it's, it's a thought of a, of a, what if possibility, you know? And it's crazy because it, I, I actually do own Blackberry stocks, not a lot, but just to play around with it. Because I got a couple when uh, the stock market crashed back in uh, March or whatever. Grabbed a couple stocks here and there. And I've seen every month, every single month, article after article. BlackBerry is amazing. The stocks are good. You should be investing in BlackBerry. Check out BlackBerry. And I'm watching the stocks. It's slowly like it's got It's doing all right. And this kind, I don't know if it concerns me or not. Because then they're going to be investing a lot of money into a new venture. And if it fails, then what happens to the stock, right? Because right now their stock is solely off their security software, nothing to do with the mobile stuff. 
But, you know, it is it is what it is. Businesses have to evolve. Businesses have to change and businesses have to try things. And who knows? It's like it, it's like us creating content. We don't know what we're going to create and if it's going to be viral or not. We have no idea. Right. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe my two BlackBerry stocks could end up being worth a hundred thousand dollars. I'm just you know throwing numbers out there, whatever. Probably impossible. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Like who would have thought that uh, Tesla or Amazon would be worth two thousand dollars a stock? You know what I mean? So it's Tesla, just interesting. I would say Tesla would be like one of the newest companies out there right now that is just destroying the market at what they're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I'm trying to think of anybody that's brand new coming into the market. I'm sure something is going to pop up. Everybody always says, uh, people keep saying 2020 is the year that is going to change a lot of things. 2021, you're going to see things slowly come up from the ashes and of course i'm talking about this whole pandemic thing that we're in yeah uh, a lot of stuff a lot of people have closed down a lot of companies have shut down um so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting what people do um after this whole thing is over who's gonna come up but is there any so dang dude already so we're we're at the part of the show we're an hour in um is there anything that that we can think of now that we want to add before we go. Oh, man. I mean, we ended last month with the rock and we never really followed up on that, but that's an interesting one. Um, I'm curious to see what happens with the rock still. I think it's going to take a few months for him to like iron that one out. Did you hear anything about that? No, I didn't hear anything about that either. No, I haven't uh, heard any updates yet, <clears throat> man. I don't even know what else you want to talk about for like a, a what the hell, but this was like some awesome content. I think and we covered pretty much a lot <laughs> in these two episodes. <laughs> so much content, man. So Let us content. know in the comment section below, anybody who's listening, uh, if you're listening or watching, if you're on the podcast or if you're on YouTube, wherever you're at, leave us a comment. Let us know what you guys think. Um, feel free to shoot us uh, a, a message or hit us up on Telegram, emails. We're all over the place, guys. Just hit us up. Let us know. Um, and... Yeah, so we're going to wrap up the show. Um, As we always say, you guys take care. Take care of each other. Stay humble and be patient. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. (laughs)